Hi, welcome back to the Chasing Tone Podcast. I'm Travis. I'm Max. I'm Brian. Still. And I'm getting made fun of this morning because I made a slight comment that wasn't even backhanded <laughs> that I preferred my camera to be straight on over than to the right. And Bob moved it, and he calls it the princess cam now. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting like one of those little, like a little headers at the bottom. Like, princess. <laughs> 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 if we make it the Prince Cam, I'm okay with that. Prince Cam. Symbol. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I was going <laughs> you do there. Have some pretty hair, to... though. So maybe Prince is. I'm going to cut it off, I think. Really? Yeah, I think it's time to grow up. Are you, are you over your midlife crisis, Dilio? I am. I kind of had a rude awakening that basically put everything into perspective. You know what I mean? So, like, it don't matter. You realize that there's no Santa Claus. It is. Stop it. <laughs> there's kids that watch this. That's true. <laughs> We're going to, is it, we're is to put something at the beginning of this. Be like, if your kids are listening, <laughs> yeah. turn it off. Yeah, we, we, at, oh, man. We, well, we, we didn't tell them that there's no Easter Bunny. I mean, we didn't say <laughs> They'll like, figure there's it out. They're smart kids. <laughs> I mean, we, well, maybe not. They're listening to this. So. <laughs> How smart can they Say be? anything about there not being a tooth fairy. Right? What if there was a tooth bunny? That'd be terrifying. It would be. It'd like, be like Monty oh. Python. The killer bunny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. Shot pointy teeth. <laughs> uh, I'm going to skip this first question because I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, no. Nope. I, I like it, man. No, go ahead. <coughs> no, I just, I, I just don't have anything to add to it. And sorry about my cough. I got a little bit of a cough here. I'm on the Delsum, you know. <laughs> you ever Very heard of this stuff, on. Delsum? They have a commercial for it. Yeah, it's like it doesn't do anything else other than help your cough. And I forgot to take it this morning. So, but it's good. We need to create a pro, pro or a product called Off a Cough. Off a Cough? Uh, shh. <laughs> look, look at Maxie. What I said. <laughs> hey, it'll be a good cough stopper. Off a Cough. Say it fast if, and, and say that in front of your kids. <laughs> right? I thought it'd be, I'm like, oh crap, I shouldn't be saying this out loud. Or if we start a furniture store, call it Sofa King. Yeah. <laughs> and we can say that all our furniture is sofa king nice. And that'll be the standard. Sofa king will be the new standard. <laughs> Hashtag sofa king. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of them. I'm full of these. You anyway. had some time to think this uh-huh. past week. Yeah, <laughs> I did have some time to think. Um, okay. Uh, David, <laughs> how do you say the Freed? David Freed? Sure. Uh, uh, yeah. He sure. says, good eye from down under. Huh? Yeah. That's pretty good. It's one of those eyeback commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Foster's strength for beer. Okay, it says I absolutely love your podcast, guys. Keep up the fantastic work. Especially love the geeky stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. It's, I think I'm going to just stop there. Next, <laughs> and no. that's, next that's, question. That's, yeah. <laughs> My question for you, specifically related to my setup, but maybe relevant for others who have a single speaker combo amp, which is totally relevant. Um, my main amp is a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, obviously with a 12-inch speaker. I've been mulling around in my head for some time whether to purchase an extension cabinet or not. The reasons I've steered away from it so far are, number one, the amp is loud. I've never taken this amp over about two and a half or three on the volume knob, even when playing live, and I've read that a second speaker adds to the overall volume. I don't need volume, but better tone would be nice. Let's stop there. Okay. I disagree with the volume thing. I think it adds presence, and I think it can add whatever frequency that speaker is. Uh, You're saying ad- adding a second speaker adds presence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And not, not presence as in tone, but as right. in like... More, I don't know. Fills up space. Yeah, more more, depth. You're pushing more more air, for sure. Right. And I've always been of the thought that, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is just something I've thought, but it kind of splits your signal. So, like, it's not like adding, like, if you have a 50 watt amp, what are those, 40 watts or something? Those. What what, what amp is it? Hot Rod Deluxe. I think they're 40. So, Mm -hmm. it's not like it's pushing 40 watts to one speaker and then 40 watts to the other speaker, right? Right. Right. Yeah, so it's not like it's going to be twice as loud or you're getting twice as much amp out of it. Uh, It can be louder. I mean, if you're you're talking wattage, wattage is hard to really compare that to volume. I mean, there's some 50-watt amps to be really loud, and there's some 50-watt amps that aren't just so loud. Right. In the same way, you can take two different speakers, and one one will have less output in decibels, 
and want to have more output in decibels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. by that standard, it's possible you could get less volume with two different speakers, which especially possibly you can get more volume. Right. Depending on the speaker. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're running like a, a different homage, you're making that speaker work harder. You can get. Did less you say homage? Homage. Or impedance. Homage. Or impedance. Is that, is that a French word? Homage. homage. Hashtag yeah. homage. Homage. <laughs> I could I could have got away with it too. No, if, if it wasn't for you kids. kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, especially if you're running like an inefficient speaker, you could probably make that amp work a little bit harder. You probably get less output volume out of that one speaker. I like a two twelve. I just I, I think it. I don't know. It just it feels like it's it throws like it's more depth. Mm-hmm. It does throw a lot. It yeah. throws, yeah. And you know, I bought one of those little Marshall Class Fives. And then I also have a Marshall Extension speaker, which is a 112. It's got a tone tubby in it. And I run though, I, I run it out of that into that, and it sounds killer, man. So it's a fat speaker. It is a fat speaker. And it's hemp cone for the stoners. Is it really? Yeah. So it's like a husky version. Dude, of I'm going to smoke my speaker. <laughs> Can I come? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Jake's thoughts. Jake, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> Jake, Frank, we have no guests. We have Jeeves. What do I do, Jeeves? Answer, monkey. <laughs> Jeeves is the guy that takes your car keys when you drink. That's <laughs> true. Hey, give me back my keys. <laughs> or a famous Brian Womplerism. Am I sober enough to drink? <laughs> True story. Have, Have you we told that, that story on here? No, but we probably shouldn't because I can get in trouble. Okay, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> If you had to ask that question, the answer is no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So... Okay, so now let's move on. He says, in a live setting, only one speaker is mic'd up. So really, what's the point in having two speaker cabs? I also wear earplugs. Well, let's stop there. Um, monitor. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, some people will use a second speaker as a monitor. Yeah, yeah. you could do it that you way. Know? Because just, you could do it just to add bigger effect. I mean, if you have sound coming from right here, mm-hmm. and you can also get sound coming from right there. Then you know, like okay, that's a hard way to put it. Like if I have sound back here behind me, I'm playing. Uh-huh. And I also can get sound from over here, over your right shoulder and over your left yeah. shoulder. Say it that way. It's it's more it's right. more bigger, more it better. Is. It is more better than good. It's almost like you're pushing more air. This is first thing. But and a lot of it too is it all comes back to how you feel the music is. Right. It, it it changes the way you play. My personal favorite thing to do is to run like four amps, four different amps on stage. <laughs> Joe yeah. Bonamassa. I I do, but I'm talking like the VFW. Okay, you know, right. So I got four different amps on stage. They're all split. You know. And, uh, of course, the drummer can't play on stage. He's going to play it off the stage. Right. Not, there's no room for him because my guitar amps are in the way. <laughs> but the tone is amazing. <laughs> so, you got to be louder than drummer. <laughs> speaking of, speaking right. of Bonamassa, um, a bandmate of mine and a good friend toured with Joe in 20... <coughs> was it 2012? I can't I remember. So, yeah. But he did that... Mm-hmm. When Joe did that Tour de Force DVD yep. where he played Royal Albert Hall and all that stuff. But... Uh, a bandmate of mine actually sang mm-hmm. for Joe, and he, if you're a Bonamassa fan, you can go back to one of his records where he did T for One. That's my buddy Doug singing on that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they gave him in-ear monitors. You know, it was a huge show. It was Royal Albert Hall, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was like, so what? What was it? You know, what was it like with that mix? He was like, I don't know, man. All I heard was Joe's guitar. <laughs> he said, you will not believe how loud it is he was like it's the loudest guitar i've ever stood by and that's the first time i've ever been jealous of joe bonamassa because i'd love <laughs> to be able to play that loud <laughs> you know to have like four amps all on eight oh, awesome. be great right you kind, of, you kind of got the opportunity in japan though right didn't you get to play like a miss it like cranked almost all way up on stage yeah it was a but it was only one amp <laughs> <laughs> it's not as cool as you should ask for more back I know right <laughs> no we used the the 150 watt triple rex or whatever mm-hmm. that's what was backlined and uh we put it on the 150 watt setting kept it on the clean channel flipped it on the push mode and cranked it to like eight or nine Lucky. and just used telecasters and they sounded like les pauls <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> then i used a plexi drive mm-hmm. to boost the already dirty channel and mm. it was basically just a fuzz box at that point right it was awesome right I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the podcast. I don't have to answer your phone. There's nothing you can say about it. So if you're calling right now, uh, it's Tough. probably going to get a voicemail. Tough. <laughs> okay. Not even fan. So that was from David Freed from Down Under. Were, were we done? Were we done with that one? I'm sorry. <laughs> this isn't even my paper. This this is a different paper. Your paper from right last there. week. So, that's from last week. No, Brad's like, I need you to print out a paper. And he's like, I printed out my own paper. <laughs> I just <laughs> had extra just enough. in case. 
And I'm so sorry everybody's having to listen to me cough. But um, where is it? Oh, yeah, and he's talking about uh, he wears earplugs. He's already got some hearing loss, mm-hmm. which sucks. Um, so it's for my own selfish desire for ultimate tone on stage rather than the cool aesthetics of an amp, quote, stack versus a combo. That's mm-hmm. fine. I'm really not going, you know. So basically, he's just reiterating the fact that, like, do I right. need the second cab because I'm not trying to look cool. Right, you it's know. a little more yeah. hearing loss. Just, just right, <laughs> yeah. Gun this far, might I, it. Might I uh, also suggest um, dubs, D-U-B-S, their acoustic filters. Mm-hmm. Check those out. Those I like them. Good. Those are much better than the foam. Oh, foam. man. And Nasty ear erasers are really good. So I like the ear erasers. You like really? the ear erasers better. Mm-hmm. To me, they don't. I don't think they I don't, work as well. I don't well. like them near as well as the... Uh, the dubs. Yeah. I like the dubs because I can actually tell they're mm-hmm. working. Like, it, like the ear erasers, they just seem to, to barely work. So for me, they work pretty well. I don't when I when I drive home, I don't get the sound of my ears. All yeah, no, that, if that works, that works for you, you're wrong. But whatever. <laughs> yeah, why would I be right? Hash brown wrong. <laughs> you were right last week or, or this week. Wait, I don't know. You said something right. <laughs> you already forgot. It, it yeah, it was so. Yeah, no, it was. It, what was it about? It was about. Oh yeah, recording yourself to analyze your own tone. It's true. Yeah, I Boom. was right about that. Yeah, you were right for once. <laughs> so Waldemar, Wal- Waldemar, Waldemar, Waldemar Skogland, Skogland, from Sweden here. I'm a big fan of your podcast, even though I'm a bass player. Oh man, we'll forgive you. <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> what, can be oh, da, 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 this portion of chasing tone is bass player jokes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, let's go. All right, here we go. I here we go. Here. All right. Uh, <laughs> how do you get a bass player off your porch? Uh, how do you get a bass player off your porch? You pay him for the pizza. <laughs> What's the difference between a pizza and a bass player? A pizza can feed a family of four. <laughs> How do you know a bass player is at your door trying to get in? Huh? He's fumbling for the right key. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, here's one that I'll, I'll make it short. <clears throat> so this guy walks into a music store. He talks to the clerk and says, hey, man, I'm, you know, I've been playing music for about 15 years, but I want to try a new instrument just because it seems like I get no respect. And he's like, well, what are you looking for? He's like, I don't really know, man. Do you mind if I just bang away on a few things? So the clerk's like, yeah, go ahead, man. So about 15 minutes later, the guy goes, I think I've settled on what I want. I want to try two different ones. And he said, okay, what do you want? He's like, that big red horn, I want to try that, and maybe that accordion over there. And the guy goes, he goes, ah, oh, you're a bass player. He goes, yeah, how'd you know? He goes, well, the radiator you can have, but the fire extinguisher has to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, it's a long-winded joke, but it's pretty good. That's oh, a pretty good one. I actually saw a cool little bass player cartoon. It was uh, this little small guy and this great big, you know, brutish-looking guy sitting next to each other in a jail cell. Big guy turns to little guy. Or the little guy turns to the big guy and says, you know, what are you in here for? And the big guy says, I killed somebody. And then he goes, the big guy asks the little guy, he goes, what are you in here for? And the bass player said, well, I played bass with a pick. And then the next, <laughs> the next scene you see, like, they're, like, totally on opposite ends of the bench. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Hopefully Bob can throw it up on the screen and then you can laugh for yourself. So. You have to find it. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Can I do a shout out? Yeah, you can point? do shout outs. So... You, can, you, can this say, you don't have to shout. Ha! Loud noises. No. <laughs> actually, I got. Uh, I always get the cool stuff from customers. So if you want to send me like guitars and amps and stuff next time, that's cool. No, but uh, actually, I get this letter. It says, Max, enclosed is something I came across the other day and thought, Max needs this. So what do you get a man that has everything except a Whitfield? The younger sibling who hasn't left for college and is therefore <laughs> taken for granted by dad, the one that's always passed over when the freebies are handed out. You get him his own emergency zombie apocalypse, ready stash of B's and G's. That's what you get him. A shuffle life of over 10 years. Always ready for when Brian and Travis go out to Nam and bon, boondoggle. And you're stuck holding down the fort with no one to run out and get you some carb and pork fat goodness. Ready for the next Geek Out podcast on the op vs. JFETs when your energy is low and you're falling asleep on camera. All you need is 10 minutes, a bit of hot water, and some trust in the miracles of modern technology. <laughs> Abe Matthews, thank you for the freeze-dried B's and G's. Uh, <laughs> freeze-dried <laughs> biscuits and so gravy. gravy. Yeah, it it a- literally says freeze-dried <laughs> biscuits and gravy, buttermilk biscuits with gravy and pork patty crumbles. <laughs> that's, so That's got to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
the the part of me is like, hmm, could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if this is going to stay on my desk forever and ever, or if I'm actually going to try this. You so. got ten years to figure it out. Yeah, you right. You got ten <laughs> years to, to to ponder it. It might be a cool uh, uh, Instagram photo. It will definitely be a cool Instagram <laughs> so, photo. That's for awesome. sure. Thank you very much, Abe. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Man, we're going right through these questions. Do I have the right paper again? Did you have the you right paper again? Sw- switched with me, but I got. Oh, the- wait a minute! We never even answered Valdemar's question. We just started making fun of bass players. I know. Yeah, you just. You well, just thanks for listening players, previously is- to the previous episodes. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, you're no longer gonna Ready to release a bass pedal. Yeah, I know. Oh, that Awkward. just that just answered number three. Let's go to number three then. Have you ever thought of making bass pedals? If you did, make a bass fuzz. I, oh, if you did make a bass fuzz, I would be very interested. It's okay. comma placement, sorry. No. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's coming in a few weeks. Boom. Or months. Actually, I saw soon a picture. as we get built, it's coming. I saw and, a picture of it. Yep. And uh, sure. Yeah. We kept you, the number of knobs down so it's simple for you guys. Oh. <laughs> it's, I'm joking, it's but volume. seriously. And that's how we oh. sold two pedals. <laughs> Way to go, Max. I'm just joking. No, I'm actually, joking. It, it's uh, normal Wampler stuff, so you got 18 knobs. And, and three yeah. switches. switches. <laughs> yeah. Yep. A couple LEDs. How many foot switches? I forget if there's one or two. <laughs> but you can, uh, you can do everything but make breakfast with it. So. Yeah. B's and G's. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. I won him over. You I did. won him over. I finally accepted it. <laughs> okay, let's go to his first question. Uh, what guitar player? Yeah, which guitar player are your favorite uh, fav- playing wise? Favorite. Favorite. Yeah. Okay. I well, they misspelled favorite. Well, it's just not American. I don't understand. It's that British. Word. Okay. I'm t- <laughs> what guitar player are your favorite playing wise? Yes. Um, living or dead? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. That's, you know, there's, well, there's a lot a of guys I like. Like, I tend to like the people in which I don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, like, or I can't figure it out. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like, and this is gonna sound arrogant. I don't mean <laughs> it that way, but like, there's enough. <clears throat> like for instance, Hendrix. I can figure that out. There's enough resources on the web mm-hmm. to where if I get stumped, I can go find that resource. There's a video of somebody showing me how to do it. You know, so like I love everything about Hendrix as far as his groove, his pocket, the note choice, <laughs> his innovation. But as far as like being one of my favorite players mm-hmm. playing wise, I mean, I, I'd have to go with somebody like, I, oh man, I don't even know, like Julian Casper maybe. Do you know him? Sure. He's he's bad, well, dude. The Everly Brothers, maybe. No, 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 no. no. But <laughs> no, he's a he's a professor at Berkeley, I think, or maybe just teaches private lessons at Berkeley. I don't know. Him. But he's got a couple a couple records out. I think three. <laughs> but yeah, and and that'll go ahead and answer my second. Who's your favorite player tone wise? That guy. That guy is the biggest tone nerd you'll ever meet, man. I don't I don't know how you get it to one thing. I mean, I like. I like people in each different genre. Well, and that's what I'm talking about. Because I'd be like, I like Paul Gilbert, but I also like, you know, Hendrix. Right. And I also like Steve Vai. And Brent Mason. And, and Brad Mason. Pace. So, I mean, I don't. And if you a, ask me next. Guys. Yeah. And if you ask me next week, I'll have, I'll have yeah. a different person. Right. You know. But I'll be honest. I haven't listened to a lot of guitar influenced music in a long time. <laughs> Really? Like, you know, virtuoso stuff, or i just been listening to, like, three-chord rock songs. I kind of started, I kind of got on this kick where I started going back and listening to, like, some of the music that got me, like, into wanting to mess with guitar pedals. Nice, sense? yeah. So, I'm, I'm, like, revisiting all this stuff from, like, the 90s. Nice. And so, like, I hear a song, I'm like, oh, man, I forgot about that tone. You know you what? Know? You missed... You missed something. I missed it too. Otherwise, I would have told you about it. But I guess a couple weeks ago, you remember the band Autograph? Yeah. Yeah, I met they, Steve Lynch. They were an indie. They were. At a bar no. that I play at. Really? Yes. Oh, that's pretty, uh... No, 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 no. At um, Southport Bar and Grill. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were Autograph? there. Autograph was there. Yeah, and it's Stephen Lynch. Radio. Is that, is that? Yeah. Steve Lynch, yeah. Yeah, he was there. He was like, he wow. was doing his thing there. He had Monster Tone. Huh. Oh my, he didn't? He, he had Monster He's Tone. He killer player. Crate a long time ago. Really? Yeah, Crate used to be a thing in the 80s. 
Actually, Craig makes was that. Was he doing the tapping? Because he was like a monster. I, I wasn't tapper. there. I didn't. No. I didn't go. But yeah, he was I didn't like know a, about it. He was like a shredding tapper type of guy. But it may have been this past Friday. I don't know. All my days <laughs> ran together. By the way, I do want to say I'll go and bring it up. Right? Sure. Okay. I had a lot of people who are fans of the podcast comment on Facebook or you know whatever. My my son was pretty sick. A couple, was couple in, weeks ago. Yeah, it will have been. Yeah, by the time this comes out, yeah. right. Um, a couple of weeks ago, my son was pretty sick, and I got a ton of comments from people. So thank you guys so much. I read every one of them. Every one of them was appreciated. And if you're a doctor, nurse, or respiratory therapist, thank you for what you do. But that's that, mm -hmm. right? What even got me there? Oh, yeah, because all my days run together. But Stephen Lynch, <laughs> Crate Amps, the V30. And the V15. I no, this like, is, like, we're talking like, what was their solid state amps? Like GC30 or... Oh, when they were wrapped with carpet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was, that was a cool phase. <laughs> no, yeah. it wasn't. That, that was, yeah, that, I think that's when he was endorsed by Crate, if I remember right. <laughs> when I was in college, I was in the band and... Uh, where did it happen, Crate? Are they still around? <laughs> I think so. My first PA was a Crate PA and it yeah. actually had the wooden casing on it. Yeah, an The crate. crate. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was awesome. Do you remember I that? I still have a Crate PA. <laughs> You do, yeah, but yours is carpet. Uh, it is carpet, yeah. <laughs> it's, Max's PA has a, a reverb tank in it. Actual, yeah. Actual spring mm -hmm. reverb. That's cool. <laughs> it so, was in my back seat, and I was driving. And every time I had a bump, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it like that, PV, that PVPA over there that weighs like 45,000 pounds? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. It. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I'm actually going to agree with you on something. You know how... Okay, Brian, I'm not going to say hates it, but Brian prefers plate reverb to spring reverb. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it comes to vocals, I do too. Mm -hmm. So spring reverb on vocals sounds pretty weird. It does. You know? Yeah, sounds like a Dick Dale song. <laughs> <laughs> I heard something about Dick Dale, how he rigs his uh, reverb tanks, because he uses the standalone units. He uses bungee cords? He, he suspends them from the ceiling on a rope. Uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of this stuff. So they vibrate more. No, so they so don't. Vibra so the stage yeah. vibration doesn't go. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. I've seen guys like use like That's luggage rack in hotels and like stretch bungee cords across it and sit <laughs> on that. It's like it's yeah. like suspended. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, or just use a pedal. The Wampler <laughs> Post Spring Reverb. <laughs> but I know what you guys are thinking. Like, what are my favorite guitar players? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to, since you asked, I'd have to say a living uh, Jack Pearson, John Mayer, Dead, Sean Costello, C. Ray Vaughan. But Jack Pearson's pretty good. Oh, yeah, Jack Pearson's a man. Yeah, I signed up for that Jack Pearson Guitar Academy online. He's I'll not, leave it at, at he's that. He's not the best teacher, but man, that guy can play. I bet he's a good teacher one on one. Probably. You know, I talked to him about taking lessons, yeah. and he's like, yeah, man, you know, I could do Skype or, or Nashville. I was like, man, you know, it'd be cool. I could come to Nashville. Right. You know, and he was like, yeah, man. So I was like, yeah, what do they cost? And I never heard back from him. <laughs> Damn it. You know? You hit me to Scott Henderson, too, though. He's pretty awesome. Oh, Scott man. Henderson. Oh, man. See, that's another guy. Yeah, that's the guy. Mm -hmm. He's you know? just awesome. Well, that's what I'm saying. How do you narrow it down to you just don't. one? Well, here's the thing. Do you guys want to hear the greatest blues song ever written? Go, um, go check out a song called Tore Down House by Scott Henderson. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, if you look at it from a song structure standpoint, it's it modulates major and minor, in it, but it's so comfortable, you don't even... I think you were playing that for me. Oh, uh, yeah, because I was like, man, what's this tone? I want to get this tone, and basically it's just a strat into a matchless. Yeah. Oh, man. And if you go on his website, he tells you what amps he used on every album and everything. Same with Julian Casper. He'll break it down song to song. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's cool. You can see, like, exactly what gear he... If you like a tone on a song, mm -hmm. they'll tell you. It's cool. I like Lover Boy Get Lucky. Favorite guitar. Is that I'm um, up all night to get lucky? <laughs> I'm just teasing. You. No? No, that's uh, uh. that's uh, uh. 1980. 1980 guitar rock. What was it? Hmm. What was 1980 like? <laughs> Well, it's kind of cool. were you born in eighty six? Eighty six. People around here in Martinsville were, st were still wearing, you know, the butterfly collars. And you were born in the mid seventies, so it's not like you're that old. I remember nineteen eighty though, because that yeah. was when I got my first Motley Crue album. No, that was nineteen eighty two. 
Yeah. Rock and roll, man. <laughs> Nothing like your parents buying you a shot at the devil. <laughs> yeah. See, my 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 mom was buying me rap records. She never knew like what they said on them. But it was like <laughs> it was like two live crew and two short. Two packs of sugar. Yeah, two, two packs, packs of sugar. sugar. Two packs of sugar only cost fifty cent. Come on. Yeah, I remember. I went through my my nothing. Uh, nothing. Went through my break dancing phase when I was about. Dude, can you still 11. break dance? <laughs> no. Pop and lock it, dude. I, I can break. I can break. I used legs, to break dance too. I lived in Washington D.C. Terrible. Our neighbor, uh, his his dad had a good job. So like <laughs> he would get these he like worked for you a got place. New cardboard, what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He worked for um an appliance place and they would always get like cardboard boxes that refrigerators came so in. You got awesome cardboard. Oh, we'd get some killer cardboard and we put it in the driveway and we mm, we'd break it. <laughs> we would. I was a breakdancing fool. <laughs> I can you still could, break dance? I can huh? see some moves. I probably can. I mean, I haven't done it for a while. But chicks dig break dancers. You were thinking about it for a second. I was. I, was, I totally going, was. I, I was like, I, still. I was like, I wonder if I still got my moves. No, that's not oh, a robot. That's not cardboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and that's no. how Travis broke both wrists. Uh, Scott Henderson. Yeah, that's probably my favorite guitar player right now. See, it changed just in the last ten minutes. <laughs> Your guitar player, something shiny. <laughs> but, you know, something shiny. Squirrel, <laughs> piece of candy. Ooh, piece, piece of candy. candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, leave email them Brian. in. <laughs> email Brian. Uh, no, uh, leave them in the comment section below on the YouTube. Um, hit us up on Facebook or uh, Instagram. Instagram or podcast at wampapedals you know, you guys, there's no excuse for not getting in touch. You have all these outlets. You could just True. send a letter to P.O. Box 2122. 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah, I have no idea. Is it 2122, 20, 20, Martinsville, Indiana? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, you and know, with, with, with that be, letter, maybe send like a guitar amp or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Something relevant. I haven't gotten any. Well, I got that class five, but other than that, I haven't gotten any gear in a long time. Man, I was, I, we were at Sweetwater this week. What a. And I was like this close to buying a Paul Reed Smith. And then I said, nah. You should have. I, uh, I like want to so bad, but. I understand. I get it. No, trust me. I totally I'm like on it. the verge, man. I love mine. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's a good, it's a nice one. But, you know. I got some new gear lately. What'd you get? Oh, you have. You've been yeah. racking I've been, it in. I've been having gas lately. Gear acquisition syndrome. I got a new, uh, actually, it's on order, a MIDI tube screamer. Mm -hmm. Of course, gotta have that for the microboard. Yeah, well, that's I got a uh, cool pedal. Get a Peltrain Volto power supply, dude. You got the uh, the Blackbird board. Oh, I did. Yeah, that was a gift. Yeah, but is that gear? Technically, yeah. I guess it is technically it holds gear. gear. I think you got to be able to plug something in to be able to call it gear. Uh, other than that, yeah, I got more. a new prototype. That Boom. Count, does that count for new gear? I got a yeah. surprise come for you guys later today. A little package from TC. Mm, come on. Yeah, mm. some little some little goodies from TC. So yeah, don't hassle the Hoff. <laughs> don't hassle the <laughs> hassle the Hoff. Yeah, right. That's what I'm getting is a Hoff, right? Yeah, yeah, mini Hoff. Yeah, mini Hoff. Travis gets a baby. Brian gets the big one. <laughs> <laughs> don't hassle the Hoff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so for Max and Brian, I'm Travis. Thank you guys so much for listening.